Welcome to the ETG, an electronic troubleshooting guide for anyone interested in electronics, hosted by Mark Christopher. Hi, I'm Mark Christopher, and this is another episode of the ETG. Today we're going to cover thermal resistive isolation, and you ask yourself, what is that? The process of isolating a resistive short on any bus to any other bus can be truly isolated with this process. The process involves heating the resistive network and thus increasing the resistance. And by increasing the resistance and observing it on your multimeter, you're able to isolate a small pinpointed area in this episode, I'm covering isolation of integrated circuits. So, this is how you do it. Alright, so, a scenario here. We're trying to find a 3.45 ohm short on a 3.3 volt bus. So, there are different possibilities to troubleshoot this. Uh, you can remove each component or lift the legs to those components that uh, affect that bus. You can try to isolate the circuit um, if it's designed well. Um, but that is about it. We have 15 components on this board that use the 3.3 volt bus. So that's not real uh, convenient to be lifting all of those different uh, pins or components off the board. So. I'm going to show you a quicker way to isolate the actual yeah. component that is causing the short. So I'm going to use hot air to do this. And I call this a thermal resistive isolation process. So this can be done with a uh, hot air reworking station, but it could also be done with uh, a blow dryer or a, a hot air gun. So now that it's warmed up, I'm going to go to each of the components on this board that I know are on the 3.3 volt bus, and I'm looking for a reaction here that is significant. Minor changes here, those are minor. I'm going to let the board cool off just a little bit and then keep going. Okay, now that looks significant. That's really changing there. So I've got like a one ohm change there. Definitely an issue there. I'm going to verify it again. Looks like it's my CPU. Now, also, um, you should be checking your voltage uh, regulator. In this case, I call it the VR2. Now, I've seen some, sometimes when they're good, they actually react. Um, but for the most part, uh, it could give you a false positive on that but they're simply to lift off one component and check just to make sure. But uh, it looks like my CPU is bad. So there's only one trace that goes to the CPU. So I'm going to lift that one pin off and see if this goes away. go. Not over roughly 5k. Problem solved. Replace the CPU.
So what do you think? Pretty good? Useful? I think it is. I've been using this process for a little over two years now. And it's now the first thing I turn to when I have an unexplained low resistance on any bus. 12 volt, 3.3, 1.8, it doesn't matter. This has been the ETG, and I'm your host, Mark Christopher. Good night. Music by Kevin McLeod. Let me spill my board. Shh, I said quiet on the set. I don't know. It's put it there. What board? Oh, right. This board, I stole it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the film. Yes. It's inspiration, okay? It's That's on. not actually his board. No. Oh, the board does not belong to me, that is true. You can you can move it to closer to it, you know. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more. It's gonna be in the way. There you go. Okay, the boards in the image. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tight. But we need to be able to see those too. Okay. And they, and this yeah, all the time I'm doing the heating and stuff. This needs to be in the view. Okay. It is. <coughs> but I may have to zoom in on it. I'm going to catch the numbers on the screen because it uh, looks like it's reflecting up. Right yeah, I, can I, I can tilt it. Do you just keep it right there? Tell me when you see it. Good. Okay, that's good. Okay. I don't see it, but that's fine. Um, okay. Oops. <laughs> Got my hat. Components. We have roughly 15 components on this board that integrate it. We have 15 components on this board that use the 3.3 volt bus. So that's not real uh, convenient to be lifting all of those different uh, pins or components off the board. So this 